just taking a quick look at this new Blue Eddy AC1 180. <laughs> this is this is the new one. This is the the one they just came out with, believe it or not. And um, you know, you're looking at it and you might say, "Well, it looks pretty familiar." Yes, it does. It looks it's basically a mini version of the AC200, the 200 series that they've had for a while. And actually, I'm kind of glad to see that they continued with that same design. I've talked about this a little bit. You know, I just prefer this the kind of like softer cleaner design of this uh the 200 series model now we'll kind of get into the design here a little bit more at the end of the video and uh we'll talk about actually i want to i want to talk about the comparison to the delta 2 model as well because i think that's kind of the, the most similar competitor and there are pros and cons to each of these so we'll get into that but just a quick overview of the specs here real quick you know lfp battery yes um 1152 so on the capacity you know pretty that's that's a little bit bigger than the Delta II, as I mentioned. Um, and the uh, charging we'll kind of get to here, get to here in a second. And then uh, 1800 watt inverter that's continuous. And well, the power lifting, yeah. So if 1800 watts isn't enough for you, you can kind of use that power lifting feature, which drops the voltage to power stuff. You know that that would be normally rated at 2700 watts. Now you know what's interesting about this that you know. As I mentioned in all my videos, you only want to use this like with resistive heater stuff, you know, hair dryer, kettle, the stuff they list here. Yes, but you know, what's interesting, you know, since you do have 1800 watts continuous, it's like, you know, one kettle is not, you're not going to need to use that feature with one kettle, right? I mean, it, you know, it, any kind of kettle you get, it's going to be below 1800 watts. Now, of course, maybe you want to have two kettles, <laughs> you know, maybe you want to have two kettles going at the same time. Uh, okay you know, you could, I guess you could do that, but yeah, you know, since you have 1800 Watts continuous, you know, I don't really think the, this power lifting feature is, is all, you know, that useful silent charging. So yes, you know, this thing, uh, well, what's, you know, we're going to, we're getting to the charging speeds here in a second, but basically you can vary it in the app. You know, if you, if you don't want the fans running when you're charging this thing, um, they do say, I think this is, it says maximum input of 300 Watts. I think that's supposed to be uh, minimum input of 300 Watts. So, you know, if you don't want any fan noise, you can basically have it charging at 300 watts. And it does get a UPS, you know, 20 milliseconds or hopefully less. Now for the charging, you know, the kind of the, the, the top spec here is, you know, if you plan to use this thing, mostly just charging it up from the wall, you're going to really, you're, you're going to be really happy with this. You know, basically 1440 watts going into this, this battery. That's only, you know, 11, what was it, 1152 watt hours. So yeah, so more than a 1C charge rate from the wall on this thing, so less than an hour, right? So, uh, and that's always good too if you, if you want to use this, kind of combine these power stations with a gas generator, right? It's kind of like the ultimate off-grid setup, you know, you can always just charge it up real quick and then you don't got to have that generator running for very long at all. Now for the solar, this is, you know, it, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of okay, it's kind of a mixed bag. So 500 watts, uh, five, 500 watts is pretty, yeah, so it's a decent spec. It's a decent spec, but it is kind of limited in uh, how you can actually input these 500 watts. So it's it's only up to 60 volts. And well, the the big the big problem is it's it's only limited to 10 amps. And the reason it, the reason for that is they're still using that eight millimeter uh, barrel input. <laughs> so um, so yeah, it's, it's 10 amps. So basically, if you want to get the 500 watts, um, you're going to have to get the, the voltage of your solar panels up to 50 volts, right? Basically, between 50 and 60 volts, which could be a little bit tricky. Now, um, I actually checked out a Hobotech's review of this thing. You know, he gets a real in-depth with all the, the tech specs and stuff like that. And so, you know, definitely check out his video if you want to know more. But um, he did say that actually, you know, they claim this thing can do up to 60 volts, but I think he, I think he was able to get up to 64 volts, which will definitely help because if you want to get like three solar panels in series, a lot of like just typical solar panels, you know, somewhere around 21 volts open circuit. So, you know, you could probably, you know, <laughs> this probably get three of those, uh, those solar panels in series. And then, you know, you would get enough voltage where you could actually hit the 500 watts. But if you only did like two, two of those in series, you know, that would be like um, somewhere around, you know, 40 volts, you know, 40 times 10, you're only going to get 400 watts on that, right? So you definitely got to get the voltage up, but it's going to be tricky to kind of keep it below the, the voltage cutoff of, you know, 60, 64 volts. 
And as I mentioned in some of my other videos, you know, temperature plays a big role in to that. You know, if, if you're dealing with colder temperatures, it's going to be much more difficult because it's going to increase the voltage of your solar panels. So if you got a warm environment, you're probably going to be good to go to do like three typical solar panels in series. Uh, colder environment, you're probably going to be limited to that too, or maybe just look for some other solar panels that will allow you to get the, the voltage you're looking for, right? All right, just to kind of talk about the design here real quick, a little bit more. Now, you know, as I mentioned, I'm kind of glad to see that they went with the kind of AC200 route. All of their newer power stations would has came, come out with, you know, the AC300, 500, and even that new AC60, they all kind of use that more squared off design. Now, you know, we do get the, the same screen though that the cheaper models have been using. And a lot of people are actually happy about this, right? A lot of people don't really like that touch screen. And uh, one thing to note too that's interesting is they still kind of gone with this, you know, where they have the, the green switches with the blue screen, which, you know, I'm not... Not the biggest fan of i don't really quite understand why they've why they've gone that route but what's interesting compared to the ac60 you can see that these these switches actually have less green on them you know basically it's just the the wording or the icon there that that lights up the ac60 ones you know they had the the green around the edge as well now these are actually different buttons because the ac60 buttons have that kind of like they're like water resistant rubber buttons you know because that model's got that ip65 rating but yeah, so, uh, you know, kind of interesting on that. And this thing does have that design, that case design that I really love, where they basically have, you know, the, the handles are kind of tucked into the corner of the unit, right? I mean, this is just such a nice design because you hardly notice that they're there and they don't protrude, they don't stick out, they don't stick up, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so yeah, definitely glad to see that they, uh, you know, continue doing that. Now, what's interesting and disappointing for me there's no light on the back. I really like the little kind of like lantern style lights that, uh, you know, Blue Eddy usually sticks on the back. You can actually see this is computer rendering. You can actually see there's this little uh, spot there for it. But actually what they did is they just put the, the sticker, you know, the, the product spec sticker that's usually on the bottom. That's where the sticker is. So that's that's an extra bummer that you got to have that big sticker on the back and you don't get a light. Now just to kind of do some, uh, just a quick comparison to the, to the Delta II. And uh, well, the Delta II has that extra battery as well. But yeah, just a quick comparison. Now with the, obviously this sale price, probably just for the launch. I mean, I don't know, maybe this will be the continuous, the regular price, but it, you know, it's cheaper than the, than the Delta II and you do get more capacity. Now the weight, it's a little bit more, right? I mean, kind of the, one of the standout features of the Delta II is the weight, you know, it's about 26 pounds. So this is quite a bit heavier and yes, it's a little bit more capacity, but it's not a huge difference. The inverters are basically identical. The charging, you know, both from the wall and from solar is almost identical. Now the Delta II does give you up to 15 amps with that uh, XT60 connector. So I think it's just a little bit more user friendly as far as being able to just easily put, put up to 500 watts of solar into it. I think that the Delta II is just a little bit better for that. This AC180 also gets a wireless charger, right? So this is something that Ucofo doesn't really do at all. And then there is the, you know, the, the situation with the extra batteries, right? So the Delta II kind of has that expandable extra battery. Now Blue Eddy does have, you know, expandable batteries. They don't have one, you know, dedicated for this, this, you know, this 180 doesn't have that kind of system, but they, they did say that they're going to basically make a cable for their other expandable batteries that you can attach to those, you know, all the other expandable batteries that they have basically, and then it'll output that eight millimeter. So you can actually use it to charge up, you know, this power station or any of the other Blue Eddy power stations that use the eight millimeter, the EV3A, the EV55, et cetera, et cetera. It's not like the most ideal situation, but you can basically that, that cable, once they come out with it, they'll be able to, you know, basically you can put about 200 watts into any of these other power stations that have this little eight millimeter input and then finally the the last little note i'd say is, is based from what i've seen again uh, just kind of quoting hobotech here the efficiency numbers this is this might be a big deal to you um the efficiency numbers on this new ac 180 compared to the delta 2 much much better you know somewhere around 90 percent efficiency from dc and ac on this thing whereas the delta 2 i think it was around 80 percent maybe even lower and obviously, since this thing has a little bit more capacity than the Delta II as well, you know, you might you might find that interesting. So, you know, if you want to just do like one standalone unit, it's it's pretty good, right? If you want to just have one kind of like medium-sized unit, 
I think this thing will check all the boxes for you. If you want to get crazy, with basically have you know some more expanded capacity. Maybe do a little bit more with the app, like the EcoFlow app will allow you to. It has a, basically a lot more customization on it than the Blue Eddy app. Um, you know, so it, it's it's kind of pros and cons, right? It's pros and cons. But um, you know, or maybe you're just a fan of Blue Eddy, so <laughs> so you know, who knows? But uh, hopefully, you just kind of found this overview helpful or interesting. And yeah, thanks for watching.